Remember when we used to get tons of decent high quality Doctor Who merchandise from San Diego Comic Con each year? Yeah, me too. It's a shame it ended quite quickly, isn't it? Today, I'm going to take a look at another Doctor Who Funko Pop. I honestly thought that I would never be taking a look at this line again because the Doctor Who line has been pretty crap. I did buy a few and review them and then after that I got a few that were quite disappointing and lacked in quality and then they just started releasing tons of 10th, 11th and 12th Doctors over and over again and then Funko complained that they didn't sell. I wonder why. But today, however, is a good day as I'm actually taking look at a Funko Pop that I actually wanted in my collection when I seen it. it is of course the Clara Funko Pop one of which that we've been wanting for absolutely years. Before this one went up on order, I did in fact want it, so then it did go up on order on Forbidden Planet's website and it sold out within 24 hours, and then it sold out again on a further website for 48 hours, so I figured that when I seen this in my local Forbidden Planet store, I better buy it, otherwise I may regret it and I may need to spend an extensive amount on it in the future. Not that I would, because I'm actually guilty about even paying the recommended retail for these things. So taking a look at the box, it is exactly the same to every other Funko Pop on the planet, we've all seen them before because they're literally taking over, because apparently they're collector's items. What a load of crap. Well, at the top, we've got Pop Television, Doctor Who, 496, which is a part of the number of this release. At the very bottom, we've got a lovely little digital graphic of the Clara Funko Pop, which is, in fact, a flip version of the actual sculpt, which is rather unusual. Then, of course, at the very bottom, we get Clara along a vinyl figure in several different languages. Age is 14 plus, God knows why. Then, of course, on the window, we get the sticker that states 2017 Summer Convention Exclusive. It is also a San Diego Comic Con exclusive. What does any of these words mean? I don't know. All I do mean is it is at recommended retail of $14.99 as opposed to the standard $9.99, meaning that they scrunched an extra £5 off me. Thanks, Funko. But remember, this is apparently a collector's item. On the sides of the box, we don't exactly get too much. We get Clara and the Pop logo once again. And then the opposite side, surprise, surprise, we get Clara printed once again, just in case you forget who you're reviewing. And then, of course, at the very back, we get some more company details along with the previous wave of figures available. As you can see, surprise, surprise, we have another 10th Doctor, another 11th Doctor, another 12th Doctor, Doctor, a War Doctor, and a Davros. No prices for guessing what two from this wave actually sold more than all the others. Then, of course, at the very bottom, we get some company information, along with some more at the very bottom. So that's really it for the box. Now let's take her out and take a look at her in more detail, although we need to keep the box very, very safe, because I've heard if we keep this for several years, it'll eventually be worth as much as about your whole life savings. So that is something to take note of. So here we have Clara out of the box, and the first thing that I'm going to mention is the choice in costume. I really do like this one. It's one of my favourite on-screen costumes that Clara ever had. It can be used for both the 11th Doctor and the 12th Doctor, which is a good thing. And I'm just glad that they've gone with this as opposed to a Series 7 Rings of Aka 10 Hyde Clara costume, because that has been used quite a lot. Due to this being a San Diego Comic Con exclusive, and it's got quite a big popularity, I'm presuming that we are probably going to see another Janet Coleman figure at some point in the future. Maybe if they do another wave or something like that, it is incredibly likely so I'm hoping that they go with something from series 9 maybe the face of the raven promotional costume because that is a pretty nice one and one that I think represents Jenna quite nicely so far I've got two female Funko Pops in my collection this one and the Rose Tyler one and both of them have a lot more detail than the male ones especially that of the 10th Doctor and the 11th Doctor that tend to be rather boring not that the costumes are boring it's just the Funko Pop themselves doesn't exactly seem to be very detailed the colors that are used seem to be very blocky nothing too much going on however this figure with a much smaller female body tends to have a lot more detail on and is generally a lot more interesting so I'm presuming that is something that is a reoccurring theme for this line. Fortunately though however due to her being female she does automatically have a certain issue and that is the fact that she can't stand up taking off the base and putting up to the side she does literally not stand up at all unaided that may not be a problem for some people but for me who tends to like my figures to actually stand up without the base I think it's just a little bit annoying considering that this is £14 and yes I'm aware it's because the head is absolutely massive and the body is tiny it's just something that annoys me I like consistency in my figures I think that if one of them has a base all of them need bases as opposed to just the ones that can't stand up and to be honest some of the male ones don't stand up either so that is something that does annoy me quite a lot so yeah just a thing that I wish would be improved but let's face it it probably won't be. Taking a close look at that costume now to be quite honest it's fairly representative of what is seen in the actual story it is rather unusual considering that this is a smaller body compared to that of the male one you would kind of expect for it to lack in detail however it is the exact opposite so I kind of wish that the whole of the fungal pot bodies on every figure were kind of a little bit smaller in order to have this much detail so starting off 
off at the top. They, of course, get the collar of the shirt, which has been rather well painted. We get a 3D sculpt on this, meaning that the collar, in fact, kind of sticks out, which is nice to see. And then in the middle of this, we do get the detailing of a necklace. Once again, this is 3D and independently sculpted, meaning that it is raised above the shirt. And the nice thing to see is this, in fact, also has got paint apps, meaning that we do have the silver necklace there, along with sort of a bronze middle section, which I do believe, if I remember rightly, is in fact a small bow tie. So it's nice to see that that's been painted. I would also something to comment on is the white of the shirt underneath doesn't in fact overlap onto the cardigan whatsoever on this piece. So it's nice to see that the paint has sort of been cracked down on and once again isn't too sloppy. It's a shame the same thing couldn't be said for the cuffs of the shirt. Moving down to the black cardigan, once again a rather unusual sculpt for this one. It's all been painted in a jet black colour. However, we do have the engraving of some bow ties to represent that of sort of the embroidery that is seen on the cardigan in the actual story. It's the only way they could have done it because printing it on would have looked a little bit weird. So this is engraved all around the body as you can see even turning around to the back there we do get a few sculpted in the middle of the cardigan we do get a rather nicely sculpted section along with some buttons that have been nicely painted on these aren't in fact sculpted they're just little dots of white paint applied over the top to give the appearance of buttons and then of course at the bottom of the cardigan we do get a smooth black trim once again ending off nicely um, so now once again we have the same bow tie engraving featured along with the cuffs of the shirt once again to be honest this side of the figure is rather good it's nice to see that sticking out nicely however at the opposite side the cuffs do tend to get a little bit sloppy as you can see we get them painted however at this side we do get a lot of overlapping so it would have been nice to see the paint apps on that a little bit more sharper however it's a funko pop you can assume that there will be some paint leaks somewhere we can look at the hand now we do get four fingers and the thumb rather nicely sculpted over the waist of the figure along with the detailing of a ring however unfortunately although this has been sculpted above the finger the paint apps have once again let it down for some reason the gold banding of the ring is sort of a few millimeters off the actual ring itself meaning that the ring paint app is in fact sort of halfway down her hand which is a little bit weird taking a look at the opposite hand there isn't exactly too much to talk about on this side because the fingers and the thumb are in fact enclosed around the back once again some rather nice detailing on this a little bit sloppy once again however we do have a very nice clutched pose moving down to the skirt of the figure now i think that this is definitely one of the parts of the costume that in fact sets it off rather well because without it it would look rather dark but it's nice to see this band of red around the middle to brighten it up a little bit once again compared to that of the costume in the actual tv show this has been rather well represented it's just been standard sculpted in your average material once again we do have this detailing down the middle of this rather nice engraving to represent that of the two pieces of material coming together just been painted in your standard rather bright red color not really too much to talk about however of course we do have the printing over the top of the checkered pattern i do believe that this has been printed on over the top however once again it does miss the mark slightly as we do have a little bit of a gap down the bottom i'm glad that this has been printed on as it does represent the dress that is seen in the story rather well just under the hand we do also get this rather unusual silver line I can recall this also being on the 3.75 figure, so I'm either presuming that it's the inner lining of a pocket or a chain of some kind. I can't particularly remember what it is, but either way, it's on the other figures, so I'm presuming that it's something that is accurate. So either way, whatever that is, it's nice that they've included it, and once again, a good attention to detail. Legs of the figure, there isn't exactly too much to talk about. We don't have any bare leg for this one. It's just been painted black to represent that of tights that is seen on the actual costume. And then, of course, at the very bottom, we do get the detailing of Clara's boots. When look in certain lights, you can, of course, see some of the detailing of the different panels of the shoe as well as a strap along with the detailing of a small buckle so much like the necklace it would have been nice if this was in fact painted of course at the very bottom of the shoe we do get the two peg holes that attach to the base and surprisingly no company information i've just realized that there's zero company on this whatsoever apart from under the neck which come to think of it is a little bit weird I think that one of the things that may set this Funko Pop above the other Doctor Who Funko Pops is the fact that it's actually sculpted within a pose. I think that considering we've seen quite a few so far, they've all been pretty bland and they've not really had anything too special. However, this figure, just the way that the hands have been sort of sculpted to hold the waist, I think that, that is very representative of Clara. It kind of captures her a little bit better than just your average hands by the side, such as, say, on this 10th Doctor figure here. Literally, it's all you get with the Funko Pops for the Doctor Who line, so it's nice to see something slightly different. This is my favourite bit when I can start feeling confused. Taking a look at the head now, what honestly do you expect me to say? It doesn't look like Jenna Coleman whatsoever because Jenna Coleman isn't a square-headed person with two massive black eyes, which I'm sure that's probably a compliment in some weird way. It's not the actual face that sets this figure out as being Jenna Coleman, it is the actual hair. That is the only thing that sets this apart and makes it vaguely look like the actual person. So it's pretty much exactly the same to every other humanoid Funko Pop out there. You've got the square head, you've got that average 
average white skin tone. You've, of course, got the two massive black eyes. And because she's female, she has three flecks at each side of her eye to make it vaguely resemble some type of eyelash of some kind to make her look a little bit like she's got makeup on. And then you've got the eyebrows at the top as well, both of which are kind of hidden by the hair strands that are kind of going over. Unfortunately, the right-hand side does tend to have a little bit of an issue where the eyebrow does, in fact, sort of end before the actual head does, meaning there's a little bit of an odd gap. But I have seen a few Funko Pop Claras with that, so I'm presuming that is a general error that the majority of them have, so it would be nice to see that fixed up. But if you're that bothered, to be honest, you can probably get a Sharpie and fix that yourself. Then, of course, you've got the giant triangular nose in the middle and no mouth whatsoever because she's emotionless and creepy. You can look at the hair because it's the only thing that vaguely makes it look like Jenna. As you can see, it's just your average hair sculpt, to be quite honest. I wouldn't be surprised if this isn't, in fact, new whatsoever and it's been used on several Funko Pops in the past. You've got a few sort of bits of strands of hair coming down below the face, much like how Jenna did on occasion certain stories. And then, of course, it's just split off. You do have a little bit of a curvature line there that does separate one sculpt from the other, where, of course, the other bit is put on top. So, yeah, it's been rather well done. It's just your average strand, really. And then, of course, around the back, you get more strands of hair with a few bits raised here and there as well, giving it a little bit of depth, nothing really too much. Absolutely zero other shades in this whatsoever. From what I can see, it's just all one block shade. It looks kind of like Jenna Coleman's hair. What else can you expect? It's a giant square-headed thing with giant eyes. Can you look at the base now? Does this really deserve its own segment of the review, to be honest? It is a circular dish. It has got a number on that is cleverly blocked by the feet. And it's got two prong things on where you can quite obviously stick her feet on there and then she can actually stand up. Oh, bless. You can stand up now. Or not. Taking a look at the articulation of this figure now. Moving swiftly on. The comparison now to my one other only female Funko Pop in my collection is, of course, Rose Tyler. To be quite honest, they look pretty good together. I think for a Funko Pop, the detail they have is pretty decent, especially on the costumes. They are a lot more interesting than the male ones that I have. And together, they look pretty nice. I wouldn't mind picking up a Sarah Jane at some point to go along with them because it's been out about a year and a half and I have been meaning to. And I wouldn't mind a bill as well. Literally, if they said today they are going to be releasing a bill figure, I would willingly go out and buy that. They should be a lot more responsive when it comes to the Doctor Who line, considering that they pump out Funko Pops left, right and centre for every other popular the TV show, if they actually put some care into this line and release a new 12th Doctor with his more series 10 hair, a Nardo, a Bill and a Missy, you could probably guarantee that those ones would sell incredibly well so why don't they get to it and do that? And then you might in fact save this Funko Pop line because at the moment, to be honest, it's withering away very quickly. So finally, do a comparison to some of the other Funko Pops in my collection. As you can see, she fits in rather nicely. It's almost like that she is exactly the same as all the others with her giant square head but to be honest, she goes along well with the Elanth Doctrine handles, which I do believe was a previous SDCC release. Let's not even go into how badly inaccurate that bloody costume is, because she also goes along nice seat with the Twelfth Doctor as well. I would like to pick up a different version of him at some point, maybe with the longer hair and the guitar, because that one's kind of relevant, I guess, and may go along with her a little bit more, as opposed to the rather dull one with a spoon. And just as an additional reference as well, I did recently also pick up the War Doctor, who's lurking around there in the background, who's also, to be honest, pretty decent. Overall, for the Doctor Who San Diego Comic Con 2017 Clara Funko Pop. To be quite honest, what can I actually say? If you like Doctor Who and you collect Doctor Who Funko Pops and you like this Doctor Who Funko Pop, then go out and buy this Funko Pop and stop wasting your time watching this review. If you like Doctor Who, like Funko Pop designs and you maybe want an extra one to add to your collection and you're an occasional collector, then yes, maybe consider this one because it's probably one of the best in the line so far, definitely with one of the highest pieces of detail. If you're somebody that does not like Doctor Who Funko Pops and does not like the design of Funko Pops, then do not buy this release. And if you're somebody generally that just wants a Clara of some kind in any merchandise, then maybe consider this one because at the end of the day it is $14.99 and it's probably one of the cheapest Claras currently on the market at the moment that you can buy. So yeah, it's kind of a win-win situation because if you do not like this Funko Pop, then keep the box in safe condition, then flog it on eBay in about two months time and it'll probably be worth double if not triple the recommended retail. The Doctor Who Funko Pop, it's along with every other Funko Pop, they are all exactly the same so if you would rather buy something else then you're not really missing out on much because there isn't really too much to it really so yeah i don't recommend paying over the 40.99 price tag and the reason why i'm saying that is because the likelihood of this being rarer in the future due to its limited exclusivity is probably quite high so yeah just consider what you're buying before you buy it really but at the end of the day it's nothing special
So thanks for watching this review. And I guess I will see you all in the next product review at some point in the near future. That I can probably guarantee will definitely not be a Funko Pop. Bye for now.